Hello, Internationals! Nice to see you! I have a great question on chromatic median chords. Hi, Tomaso. I thought that chromatic median should be one, a third apart, two, not in the same key, but also three, of the same quality. So when F minor and B minor is okay, C and A augmented should not be called a chromatic median. Am I wrong? First of all, what is this thing of chromatic median? Chromatic median is a relationship between two or more chords, okay? And these way of putting chords together as an interesting sound. You guys have heard those chords all the time. You've heard stuff like these. You hear it everywhere from Star Wars to any kind of, of, of other kind of movies. Uh, this, you can do this with major chords. And then it sounds this way. And then there are several different ways to put those chords together. So let's try to understand what we are doing, when it works, when it doesn't work, and why. And then you have in your hands the sound of movies. So before we understand chromatic median, we need to understand diatonic median. Well, let's say I'm in the key of C. And again, I'm going to stay in the key of C for just a single minute. But if you understand this, everything is going to be much, 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 much easier. If I'm in the key of C, I have those chords. I have the chords C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, and B diminish. Okay, now if I'm playing the C chord and I want to move in a median way, it means I'm moving up or down a third with the root of the chord. Either I move to what is called the median chord, so I go from C major to E minor, or I move to the what some people call the sub-median chord, so going down a third and I go to A minor. Simple as that, I'm just moving two steps higher or two steps lower in the key. Okay, and you've heard those chord progressions all the time, especially in pop music. So C to E minor or diatonic median again. You hear this all the time, okay? Okay, and C to A minor, same deal, you've heard this million of times, okay? Million, millions of times. It's a very popular move. It's different though than what, for instance, many classical players or jazz players do when they move mostly in fifths. In jazz and classical music, you typically move in intervals of four or fifths, okay? So you go like C, uh, C, G, D minor, A minor, or A minor, D minor, G, C. So you move up with an interval of a fifth or a fourth. So different kind of chord progression. And again, it's not that one chord is the median, is, 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 is the diatonic median, it's, that it's a relationship between chords, a distance between those chords. Makes sense? So that's what happens in a key. Now we call them chromatic median when those two chords are not in the same key, but you are still moving up and down, either a major third or a minor third. A minor third would be three frets on your guitar, a major third would be four frets on your guitar, and if you move up or down that amount of frets, you and the two chords are not in key, you have a chromatic median. Well, let's make a simple example. I'm still starting from C, okay? And I want to go up a minor third instead, and I get another major chord, and I, and I get E flat, okay? Let me first play it. So I have C major, C, and then I add E flat. And again, yes, you've heard this sound in several movies, not so many, not in so many pop songs, unless you listen to Radiohead, but in many movies you hear this kind of sound, and it's typically a comedy movie when they use the major chords, like... Okay? Makes sense? Now, this works, but why it works? So different theorists have looked at it, and then give different reasons for why it works, and pretty much nobody's really right, because they concentrate on different aspects. Let's see what it could be. Well, the notes in the C major chord are C, E, and G. The notes in the E flat major chord are E flat, G, and B. They gave, theories give two different explanations on why this works. One, a few of them say it's because both chords are major, and the other, other people say it's because those two chords have a note in common. A chord progression works if your brain can find a meaning behind this and find a way to connect those chords together. Okay, so those are both good reasons. If they're both major chord, your brain is expecting the second one to be a major chord, so when you hear it, that's a relationship between those two chords, and it sounds good. Or it could be that the note in common is important because it connects those chords. So if I have C major, and I have this G on top, and then I play a, an E flat, and the G, chord, the G note is still on top, so this note connects those two chords. Is it because they are the same quality, major and minor, or because they have a note in common? Well, 
Really neither one. But the, the first thing to notice is that if the two chords have the same quality, they will always have a note in common. Because you see, if I'm doing C, ma C major to E flat major and it's a minor third, they're going to have the G in common. But I could also do C major to E major, and in this case, you know what? I, 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 sp I spelled E flat with a, with a B, but it's B flat. Sorry, guys. <laughs> if I have E major, my notes are E, G sharp, and B, and the common note is E, and the, th the chromatic median works perfectly anyway. So I have C, better this way, and then I have E major, and it still works perfectly. And now the common note is E, and you can hear it. And put it this way so you can hear the top note. Same. Okay. If I'm going down and I keep using major chords, I can go down a major third or a minor third. If I go down a minor third, I'm going to have the A chord. The notes in the A chord are A, C sharp, and E, and then again I have the E in common, and that sounds beautiful too. But I can also go down a major third, hint an E flat, and so I have A flat, C, E flat, and now the common note is the C note. And again, this still works beautifully. No problem. And if you do the same thing with minor chords, going up a major third or a minor third, or going down a major third or a minor third, you discover that every time you use the same chord quality, so they're both major and both minor, they're going to have a note in common, okay? But here's the thing. They don't have to be of the same quality to work, okay? The whole point here is how much you want those chords to sound together. If they are in the same key, they sound very much together and they have two notes in common because C major and A minor have two notes in common, C and E. If they are the same quality, and you move up and down a major third and a minor third, they're going to have a note in common. And so they're going to sound together, but less together than before, because there's one note in common, and at least one note of conflict, in a sense, okay? A note that was there in the chord before, but it's flatted or sharped in the second chord. That's what makes them the chromatic median, and they sound great precisely because of that mismatch. But you can also move up and down and change the quality of the chord, and so you can get chords that are not in the same key, that are not the same quality, that don't even have a note in common. And at this point, it's where people divide. Some people say this works, and some people say this doesn't work, and it really depends on you and your ear. So I have an A minor, notes are A, C, and E. And I'm moving a major third up, so to C sharp, and I'm gonna make this chord major. So I have C sharp major. C sharp major is C sharp, E sharp, and I know some Philistine among you will gonna say F, but it's not, it's E sharp, and G sharp. No notes in common between those two chords, no key in common between those two chords, but still, there's a median relationship between them because the roots are one third apart, and so you may like it or not. Some people love it, and it's a great and acceptable sound for them. And some people are like, no, this sounds disconnected. Okay, completely up to you. You can have them with a note in common and or of the same type. If they're the same type, the same quality, they're always going to have a note in common. As long as you use major and minor triads. Things could be a bit different if you use diminished or augmented triads. Okay. And those makes them connected, and those are the most common kind of chromatic mediant. Or they can have no notes in common, and so they also are of a different quality. Now they are a bit harder to follow, and since they are harder to follow, they're also more interesting, and they give you more this feeling of estrangement, or strange, mysterious things going on. There is really no restriction, as long as you move one major or minor third, up or down, and you keep playing major or minor chords, but again, you can do this with augmented chord, diminished chord, seventh chords, dominant seven, minor seventh, major seventh, um, minor seven flat five, anything, and you can change them at, at will. As long as you move by thirds, it's gonna sound good. 
Now, how good? It depends on your ear and your tolerance for different chords. Some people will always want to have at least one note in common between the first and the second. Some people are gonna always like to have the same kind of quality between the first and the second, but some people are not gonna, simply not gonna care about that and the thing is gonna sound good anyway. I don't know who you are, the only thing to know is that you, to know is that you have to try doing this on your guitar. When you do those kind of things, it's really useful to know all the notes on your guitar at a moment's notice so you can find those chords and different voicing of those chords without thinking too much. I just publish an ebook plus video that details an exact simple method that allows you to learn all the notes over all your fretboard painlessly, just investing five minutes a day and not more. You're gonna learn all the notes of your fretboard permanently and it's easy. I'm gonna put the link in the description and it's gonna appear on the top. Just check it out, it's free, get it, okay? And that's everything for today. This is Tomato Zilli on mysteryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy.